Hey everybody, I uh, hope everybody's doing okay today. Uh, forgive me for not putting out a whole lot of videos lately, um, you know, given the circumstances of everything that happened. I just kind of needed a little, just a little breather, a little break, and um, some time to myself. And uh, also, I was not feeling well for a while, so, but we do have some good news. And if you were on the live stream the other day, you'll know what the news is. Now, you will notice that I've also been rearranging a lot. I moved my computer out here, and I got rid of a bunch of furniture. One, because we're moving, and two, because I needed to fit another enclosure in the other room. And uh, let's see what might be going on over here. Look what we have! A baby Red Bill Toucan. <laughs> Yet again. Except this time, uh, she looks normal. And you can see just by looking at her that she is, uh, well, first of all, she is considerably bigger than Maeve was even as an adult, a one-year adult. This, this baby is two months old. And she weighs, well, I weighed her earlier today, and she weighed 541 grams, which is about the same weight that Ripley weighed at the same age. So, I was really reluctant and hesitant to get another bird. Um, at least not for a while. I actually wanted to move first, but because of encouragement from our patrons... On Discord and on Discord, well, the patrons on Discord, I decided um, to go ahead and get one, especially since, well, I mean, she just, she looks extremely healthy. She was not bred by the same person, that's for sure. Um, and the circumstances surrounding me picking her up were not completely ideal for me, but I kind of just... I'm at the point where I'm just going to start taking the approach as like, unless the person I know well, I'm just going to consider every bird that I get to have something wrong. Uh, hey, what are you doing? She loves papaya. She was bred at a zoo, although I do not know which zoo yet. There are only four zoos in the country that have them, two of which breed, and those two are in the same state that I got her from. So, you want this? Anyways, I'm really excited about this, and I think it's just going to be a great learning experience for... I know, I mean, we're all... She's not a replacement for Maeve. And nothing will ever replace Maeve. The same way Tupac is not was not a replacement for Ripley. Uh, she is not a replacement for Maeve. She is a completely different bird with her own little quirks and personality traits. And she's going to be a very welcome addition to everything we have here. I think she's going to be a great ambassador. Anyways, as I was saying, I think she's just going to be a great ambassador for her species. And I'm really interested to see how she grows and develops over time. Especially when... Oh, hey, careful. Careful. Okay. Especially given how Maeve was. Maeve was 420 grams when I got her. And this bird was 530 grams. It's the same species, same gender, female, red-billed toucan. And she's considerably larger. And you can see by her bill, too, that it just it already looks red. And it just... It's, a, it's kind of... How should I say this? It's, it's kind of bittersweet because... You know, it it sucks that Maeve went through what she did, and she had the problems that she did. But it gives me some peace here, knowing that, you know, I had suspicions from the start of getting Maeve, uh, given her size and the way she looked, and just her her bill was just weird and brown, and at the same age that this bird is. And we're, we're going to reveal her name very soon, and I'm going to tell you why I named her what I did. If you just give me a moment. Oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? Hold on a second. I gotta bring up some things. 
I'll probably cut. Oh, well. Do you like phones, too? Just like Aunt Maeve? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so everybody's been wondering what her name is going to be ever since the live stream, ever since we kind of unveiled her. She was a surprise. She was kind of a surprise for me, too. Um, you know, I found her, and then I went and got her, you know, only a week or two later, and it was between her... Hey. Okay, we'll hang out with Tupac here for a second. It was kind of between her and this... I found this female... Uh, Toko Toucan as well that I was considering uh, pre-homing as kind of a rescue and then when I emailed the people it turned out that they had a pet shop and they were selling it at a pet shop which I didn't really it just didn't really sit right with me um they'd had the bird since it was oh, there she goes flying up there already <laughs> They'd had that bird for quite a while since it was a baby, and um, it looked to be in generally good health, although they did tell me they fed it parrot formula, which we know is bad. Um, but I didn't want to I didn't want to support any sort of pet store if I could avoid it. I, I, the toucans do not belong at pet stores, period. And I don't want to encourage them to get another one by purchasing one from them, even though it looked like it maybe needed a home. Uh, you know, it just made me a little uncomfortable, and all of my supporters really just fell in love with her. Hey, come back down here so we can tell everyone your name. Can you do that? Let's see if we get some food for her. She'll come down. Okay, we got her back for now. Oh. We got her back for now. Um... What was I saying? It's just, everything felt really right. And I really wanted to, I think the contra- oh god. I really wanted there to be some contrast, too, between, just so you guys- Okay, oh my goodness. Ugh. It's so hard to talk sometimes with the birds everywhere, <laughs> distracting you. Um, I just, like, I really wanted some contrast just to show you guys the hunch- the hunches I had about Maeve and- you know, I don't, she's, I don't want her to be haunted by Maeve being around by any means. That's, of course, not what I'm trying to say. But my, the point is, you guys can clearly see just by looking at her how much different she looked to how, or looks to how Maeve did when we first got her. And why I was concerned about her. So, what are you doing? Come here. Can you, can you go over here? Okay, thank you. Oh man, this video is going to be really crazy, I'm sure. Anyways, I was saying I don't want her to be overshadowed by Maeve or anything like that. But the, can you stop, please? <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that just by looking at her, look, she doesn't have any of those white feathers like I was talking about. And she's just, she's, like, much bigger than Maeve was even as an adult. And I want you guys to see the contrast of what, just those, that two, those two months of bad nutrition from the person who was hand-feeding Maeve did to her. Just those two months, and that's it. And that's how sensitive these guys are, especially as far as nutrition goes. Usually when it comes to nutrition, if they're already grown and they're already developed, they're already, um, adults and you can correct it, then, you know, like Tupac, his, his diet wasn't necessarily bad, but he just looks so much better now. You can see it in his beak, you can see it in his eyes, and, but he was already an adult. He was already developed. Um, when it comes to babies, you know, birds just develop so much more differently than what we're familiar with, being mammals. So, and it happens very quickly. You are so energetic, holy crap. Why don't we tell everyone your name already so we can wrap the video up? Because we're going to be doing a live stream with her on uh, this Friday. Can you stop? Ow! What are you doing? She still wants me to hand feed her all the time. Don't you? I, I did feed her some formula for a little while until she lost her feeding response. I was re or feeding her the 
Missouri ram fasted formula. But anyways, so she was, okay, so also I had confirmation from uh, the people I got her from that she was fed the proper formula as well. So anyways, let's tell everyone your name, shall we? So we were thinking about names, and you guys know that I'm... Oh my goodness. Can you please just concentrate while we do this? Look, you want this food? I'm so rusty. I haven't done a video in so long. Um, what am I trying to say? So, so we went through all... I went through a bunch of names because you guys know I like to name the birds. Uh, especially the females after movie characters that I admire or whatever like Ripley or like uh, Beatrix like Maeve movie TV type characters, but I thought we might go a different route With her more along the lines of Tupac. So I started trying to think of music related names So I went through some of my favorite favorite female musicians of course and the first one I thought of was Stevie Nicks of course singer for Fleetwood Mac and, um, you know, Stevie didn't really fit, especially given that my grandfather's name is Steve. <laughs> I just didn't feel like the name fit her, so I just kept thinking, hmm, what should I name? I was like, Pat? No, not Pat. Uh, hmm, Janice? Not Janice. I'm trying to think of, you know, female musicians, lead singers, such like that, or stuff like that from 60s and 70s, stuff like that. The music that I listened to. So, I, I settled with, uh, when I was thinking through Fleetwood Mac, the song Rhiannon came to mind. And then I was like, that sounds kind of interesting, because we could call her Rhea. Let me see what the meaning behind that song is. And I started reading about the meaning behind the song, and it's associated with birds. And then, just reading through Stevie Nicks' quotes on it, and it's based on a Welsh witch, uh, a Welsh mythology, a witch named Rhiannon who has three birds, coincidentally, with healing powers. Yeah, I'm talking about you. And that's, you know, I'm just going to read the quotes to you, because that says more than I can. Um, this is what Stevie Nicks had to say about the song. She says, the legend of Rhiannon is about the song of the birds. Oh my god. <laughs> She says, the legend of Rhiannon is about the, of the birds that take away pain and relieve suffering. That's what music is to me. And that's what the birds are to me. Because I've been through a lot, you guys know that. And the thing that has made my life worth living and worth being here for has been them. And she go on, goes on to say again about the song. That song, Rhiannon, is really straight out of the old Welsh mythology... Rhiannon is the goddess of steeds and the maker of birds, and her song is a song that takes away pain. When you hear her song, you close your eyes and fall asleep, and when you wake up, the pain is gone, or the danger is gone, and you'll see her three birds flying away. That's the legend, so whenever I sing the song, I always think of that. So my point is, I feel I have had, with Maeve included, three birds with the ability to take my pain away and I hope the ability to take you guys' pain away a little bit too if you're feeling down. I know a lot of people have oh my god. A lot of people have mentioned that you know our videos have been therapeutic to them. And that really means a lot to me. And um because that's what the birds are to me and that's why I do what I do and why I care so much about them because they've done that, for me, and the context of her acting silly when I'm talking about serious things is not uh, entirely appropriate, but you get my meaning. And uh, what else can I say? I mean, I'm really excited to share her with you guys, so I want everyone to meet Rhiannon, or Rhea, we're going to call her Rhea probably, and I just think that's a really cute name, and she is going to be... I, I did took, I forgot to mention, I also immediately took her to the vet. I drove all the way from South Texas back here, and then a day later went to Dallas and took Tupac with me to the vet in, in Dallas, our trusted vet, to get her checked out. 
and to get T Tupac checked out as well because I've been a little uh, anxious about that sort of thing. And um, she said she was extremely healthy. She's got some thick muscles. She's heavy. Uh, we're doing blood work and we're doing fecal cultures and stuff like that as well, just to be sure. But because uh, I've only had her for like a little over a week right now, you guys, <laughs> it's been it's been pretty quick. I did keep her a secret for a little bit because I wanted to make sure she was 100% healthy before I said anything because I just have that I have that fear now and I think I'm gonna have that fear with every bird I get. I mean, and it's one thing when it comes to like Beatrix or Tupac because they're that's kind of part of the deal. But I'm hoping she will um, continue. Maeve's legacy on and although Maeve did leave us early she left a huge impact in the toucan world and her data has been donated and you know all, everything associated with how she passed away is going to help birds in the future other toucans so I, and I think that's awesome personally so this little girl here has given me helped give me some more peace with that and helped remind me why I do what I do because it has been difficult for me not having Maeve around because my schedule and everything was based around Maeve you know she was she was the most energetic one the most needy one she called for me every morning you know I, I went to bed according to when she got tired and I'm finally getting on that schedule again because Rhea has bonded extremely quickly to me and follows me around and wants me to feed her every five seconds and she really, she gets close to me and wants to snuggle up to me, and she's just, she's a sweetheart. So I hope you guys will love her as much of I, as I have started to. And I hope we can get on a normal schedule of videos soon. And I apologize that this video was probably a little, um, all over the place. It's been, I didn't really even know how to approach a lot of it. And it's been such a long time since I've done an actual video, uh, that I just, I don't know, I felt rusty, but... Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'll be doing some more baby-centric videos with her. We'll be doing live streams with her soon. On Friday, probably. We'll have all three of the birds out. You know, everything will be kind of how it was, but also not really how it was, for obvious reasons. But we want to start a new chapter, and we're still hoping to move very soon. And when we move, you know, I want to expand and try to help as many birds as I can. And hopefully, um, I don't know, hopefully we can just make some sort of a difference when it comes to toucans. I know toucans are a minority when it comes to animals and captivity here, at least here in the United States. But I hope we can at least make somewhat of a difference. So, And I'll be doing a diet video soon, just so that information's out there. But anyways, guys, I love each and every one of you. Please join us on Friday. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye for now. Say bye, Rhea. Bye, everybody.